Hey guys, welcome back to another video of Shaman J. So recently I put up a video talking about folding devices and just devices that have some unique form factor uh, and that, are, that I feel like folding devices are the future and we really need to accept it. Now, some of you guys saw that video and a lot of people commenting probably don't subscribe to the channel or they just don't regularly know my history about folding devices uh, or anything like that. Uh, but I want to make another video just adjusting, addressing the discussion of the regular slab style phones. Now, slab style phones are probably not going to go away. They're, they're just not going to go away. And I'm holding up several different brands uh, of slab style phones because why not? You guys know that the slab style phone came pretty much after the flip phone. The flip phone uh, was the phone to have. Uh, and if you had a flip phone, whoosh, everybody whip it open, hey, what's up? And you close it and you hang up. Now, when I say flip phones uh, or uh, folding phones are the future and we need to accept that, I genuinely still stand by that. I think that folding phones are the future and we're going to eventually transition to that. I didn't say when. I'm thinking full-time foldable phones will be a, a norm for us in about four years or so. Mm -hmm. By 2025, we should see lower cost folding phones in all different specs and it's just going to be a thing. Now some people feel like uh, the folding devices will never get an IP rating and things like that. Well, I mean, we, the way technology moves folks, you can get an IP rating on anything and you can waterproof anything. It's just a matter of the OEM being able to get that at an effective enough cost so it doesn't break the bank for them or you. So slab phones, slab phones, um, just phones that don't do anything they just phones they just have a screen there's no folding there's no nothing where are these going to be in five years well i think right now we've already plateaued when it comes to phones like this it because phones now are so affordable in this form factor you can get the same spec phone here like this phone oh this phone is what 12 1300 or whatever so you can get a phone with the same internals, if not better, for about 700 bucks in different parts of the world. And so that's why I feel like the slab phones are eventually going to just not be a thing or they're going to be just the, not really something that is production anymore once folding phones hit and rolling phones, the phones that stretch out anything, ro rollable displays, it could be anything. Um, but I feel like the slab phone probably will stay around. Uh, but will fade more than likely. And I'm not saying it's going to fade anytime soon. I'm thinking it's going to fade um, five to 10 years, maybe 15 years. It'll just, it, you know, when I say fade, I don't mean they just won't exist anymore. You just won't see the focus on them as much mm -hmm. as you'll see on these folding devices. These folding phones are just it, folks. This is the way that it is. And, and, and it took me a long time to accept that. Uh, even smartwatches. I was not a fan of smartwatches and I think it took a long time for me to get on board But now I love smartwatches go figure and it's not because I felt pressure or anything from OEMs I gave it a shot People used to tell me Jay. It's a good sidekick to your phone blah 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 and I used to say wow ah, No, it's not But in reality it is and so I gave it a shot man, and I thought you know what? I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do the same thing with folding phones if you remember when the the first fold came out I was not a fan of it I, I mean, I didn't like it as much as I liked other phones and I just thought it wasn't practical. But by the time the second generation of this phone, which is what I have right here, came out and then I tested other folding devices, more affordable, the Axon M, that is a folding device, whether you want to accept it or not. Uh, my Velvet, my V60, all these phones are forms of folding phones. I even tried the Z Flip and I think the Z Flip mm -hmm. is what did it for me. That is the one that took me over the top when it came to uh, folding devices that that really made me get some understanding uh, because it was this phone folded in half mm -hmm. basically it had a 6.7 inch mm -hmm. display this mm -hmm. has a 6.8 or 9 or something like that so it was this size folded in half and it was super compact I loved it so the slab phone I feel like will still be around it just won't be as relevant in mm -hmm. 10 years or, or more uh, or so because People are going to get used to the mm -hmm. functionality of the phones that they think might be irrelevant right now, which are folding phones. Now, there's some things. Uh, yes, the folding, and some people seem to just focus on this phone, uh, but there are other folding devices. I put the V60 and the Velvet and all those ones with the attachable screens. Uh, I put all those, any, any of the, basically the LG phones, 
those are folding devices to me. Whether you want to accept it or not, they really are. And they're actually even more functional than the fold and phones and, and the dual that don't come apart. Uh, you can actually take apart the Velvet, you can take apart the V60, you can take apart the LG G8X, you can take apart these phones and make it into a regular slap phone. Now maybe we'll see something like that, maybe we'll see better snap-on cases uh, for the slap phones. Um, maybe they'll try to capitalize on that since if they feel like folding phones with the thin glass and thin plastic over it, they just can't come to an agreement to make an IP rating or they just can't figure it out. Um, maybe that's what they'll do. They'll start offering way more attachments and do a really thin screen that snaps on. You know, so the slap phone, while it's not going anywhere anytime soon, the folding phones to me definitely are the direction that we're going to go into and we're going to love it. Uh, because once you get a, a chance to experience uh, the Z Fold, the Duo, all these phones that like, are one piece folding devices, the Axon M still. Um, even once you get a chance to experience that, you're going to realize, whoa, this is really functional. I can have my phone and then I can close it up and open it up and then I got a tablet. Way more real estate to watch that movie or way more real estate to edit that photo, edit that video, do whatever. To write that email, to send that paper, whatever it is. Folding devices versus slab devices, um, it's going to transition. This is just how it goes. We transition forward because we want to get even more functionality and better use out of our devices. Because technology is definitely not going anywhere anytime soon, I would think, you know, but um, uh, since we're here, I think we probably should take advantage of the fact that we can go in this direction. The main thing I think that's holding a lot of people back is the price. That's what people don't like. They don't like the price. And listen, I totally get it. I understand you don't like the price. I don't like it either. I had to trade in a phone and get half off. This was two grand. I got it for nine sixty or something like that, nine seventy, um, with my discount in the trade. Uh, but you know, I had to do that in order to get it for that great price. You know, so if in fact you have a phone to trade, uh, some of you guys say, "Well, I'll get it when it goes on to a thousand dollars." The only way you're gonna find the Z Fold Two at a thousand bucks is if someone's crazy enough to sell it to you for that price. You know, seriously, I I, I don't see it any other way. Or it's used and beat up, or they just really someone just really doesn't want it. Uh, it's going to be a while before the Z Fold 2 drops to a thousand dollars at full cost because the Duo just did it, but the Duo wasn't too grand. The Duo top of the line was about I think it was sixteen ninety nine for or sixteen something after taxes for the two fifty six gig. Uh, but now you can get that for under twelve hundred for the two fifty six gig shipped to you. Uh, Microsoft selling it for four hundred dollars off. Best Buy has for four fifty activate service or something like that. But nonetheless, the phones that don't come apart like that, it's going to be some time before these guys are able to produce these devices at a lower price because there's these are still even the Z Fold two in my opinion is kind of like a beta style device. You know, it's not. It's it's a device that's ready for the market but there's still a few compromises that you make and some of you guys keep bringing up an ip rating uh to the people that use the price and the ip rating as an excuse that's just an excuse your people are not even satisfied with phones some people don't spend over 400 dollars, and so i find that a lot of the people complaining that it doesn't have an ip rating listen folks you don't need an ip rating for the people that have been using cell phones since day one you could get your phone wet and it will still work a little splash here, a little dunk here. You just hurt and get it out, throw it in some rice. Remember those days? You guys weren't worried about an RP rating then because you didn't even know what it was. So with these devices though, the folding devices, yeah, if you drop that in water, it might not work again. But if you get it splashed in water or something like that, it's going to work. I've done it before. I've, I've gotten that phone wet, dropped it, everything. It still works. I just dried it off and it works. But I think if you're going to continue to only use the argument or excuse that, oh, it's too high in price or it doesn't have an IP rating, once they get that together, then I'll go ahead and buy one. Well, you probably should just stay in your lane then because if, if, if price is all you have to argue about, and it's no disrespect, that has nothing to do with Because remember, I didn't pay two grand for this, uh, I paid, but still, I paid a thousand basically, and that's, that's no jump drop in the bucket. I mean, a thousand cash is no drop in the bucket for anyone for a cell phone of all things because they don't carry any value. You know, so, um, but I think if your only argument is still just the price, oh, and it doesn't have IP rating, you're going to have to get past that. You're going to have to get over it. You're in the wrong lane if that's what you're looking for. And I think a lot of people continuously talk about no IP rating and, and the price is too high. Stay over there where the $300 phones are. 
there's no way to say that without sounding cocky or arrogant, but that's t- totally not how I am or what I want to portray it to be. But you have no value if your only argument in this ring is the price and no IP rating. That's super lame because tons of phones out there don't have an IP rating and people still get them wet and they still work. You know, even phones that are over six, seven hundred dollars, some phones, most of them don't have an IP rating. So, you know, that's not take a, sh- a stab at those people or anything, but I just think that's a weak argument. Still arguing about the price, still arguing about it doesn't have an IP rating. Oh, when it drops to a thousand dollars, then I'll get it. When it drops to four hundred dollars, I'll get it. That is genuinely your real price point. Mm-hmm. So you can't watch, you know, products on the market and feel like the OEM should cut the price down to whatever you think it's going to be. The only way that's going to happen is if people stop buying them at the higher prices and stop. But that's that's where Samsung wins because they offer you such good money for your trade-ins and everything like that. There's no way that you'll pass that up, like getting this half off, you know. And a lot of people aren't paying the trade and then half off and then full. They're financing it, you know what I'm saying? So that makes it even better for a lot of people. But I would say to those people who feel like they just have to have an IP rating, yeah, you're still spending a lot of money if you want some official IP rating, but you're still getting less. So there are plenty of phones out there that cost between seven and a thousand dollars, seven hundred and a thousand dollars, and they have an IP rating, but they're not as functional as this. So you're paying. It's just, it balances all the way out, and you don't even. Most people get the device, put a case on it, put a screen protector on it, and then they're done. Most people are not outside in the rain going swimming with your devices. Even Samsung, these even okay so. If I'm being totally honest here, even phones with IP ratings, they tell you not to get it wet, even though they show you them getting it wet. Huh? It's like Q-tips. Side note, because people always have to give all these different examples. Q-tips. You're not supposed to put Q-tips in your eardrum. People do it anyway. So why are they selling Q-tips? You see what I'm saying? So you have to make a choice and decision on what you want to do. But... I think iPhones that don't have IP ratings, man, that doesn't bother me at all because the chances of me getting my phone wet or dropping it in the toilet or dropping it into water or something like that hardly ever happens. And if people say, you're, just, you're always going to have that percentage of people out there to say, oh, I need an IP rating. I need wireless charging. I need 90 hertz. You want an IP rating. You want 90 hertz and you want wireless charging. You don't need those things. Oh, I got to have it because of this price. Again, your lane is not that price lane. Your lane is two, $300 or below. That's where you should be at, for real. So when it when when you see the slab phone slowly fade out, don't be surprised when it's replaced by folding phones. And folding phones, folks, if they if, if you do the design of the dual, like I said it before, if you do use the design of the dual, I told I'm totally with that. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with that because I have two glass slabs. You know what I'm saying? So um, I don't see anything wrong with that. Uh, but if you want this style that Samsung offers, uh, you're going to have to deal with a thin layer of glass and plastic on top. That's just what you're going to deal with until they figure out a way to make that look a certain way and, and be able to get your IP rating for those that's needed or, you know, d- dissolve that crease down the middle. When people say there's a crease down the middle. This so-called crease down the middle, um, you don't even notice this, folks. Who is looking... I don't think people are actually looking at the so-called crease. It's there, but can you see it? You have to hold it at a certain angle. Where is it at? There it is right there. There is your crease. No one who has this phone, I mean no one is saying, oh my gosh, this crease is getting on my nerves. No one is saying that. They're enjoying the product. They're not even thinking about it. And that's that. I find that most of the complaints often, 99% of the time, come from people who don't own it and they're just reading the brochure. Now that's a shot taken. So slab phones, are they here to stay? Are they moving out of the way bars? Um, yeah, slab phones are going to stay, but they're going to move out of the way to make room for innovation. And to, to the person that said that this phone is dated, uh, how many other phones do you know swivel out like this? I don't know any. Some people say, oh, it reminds me of my sidekick. Yeah, it reminds me of my sidekick too. I don't know of anybody who's done this before. Any company, I don't know of any company that's done this before. So, I mean, I think it's, and, and for, it's, there's, there's also always that person, comes down to personal preference. Duh, this whole conversation, smartphoneconversations.com, that's a plug, but hit that up. This whole conversation about folding phones versus slabs 
It's just opinions floating around and people's thoughts on the matter. So in the tech space, we cannot be so closed-minded, which we still are in a lot of places. Uh, we're just closed-minded on things and we just think that it's never going to take off because we don't find that it's interesting or it's irrelevant. Folding phones are not irrelevant. Slab phones will become irrelevant though eventually because folding phones will drop in price because that's the point that everybody likes to make is once it gets down to this price, I'll get one. I want you to not just buy something, folks, just because of the price. I want you to buy something that's going to be functional for you. You got to start doing that. You can't buy things that, are, oh, you can, but a word of advice, don't buy things because of the price. Buy, buy things that are going to make your life in a certain arena or area of your life better. Make you more efficient. Make you make your production flow better. That is where phones like this come in handy for me. Very much added a bunch of functionality for me. Period. So discussion video slabs are they going away? Probably not anytime soon, but they are. So in ten years, somebody will be looking at this video and come across it and be like, "Yo," they're gonna comment. You you called it, man. You called it. I'm not trying to be right. It's just the direction that it's going to go in. It's your man, Jay. Hope you guys enjoyed discussions. SmartphoneConversations.com. That's the plug. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.